For more on this now, we're joined by economist and CEO of the Pan-African Investment and Research Services, Dr. Iraj Abedian. Doctor, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this evening. Now, let's go through the impact that these ramped up power cuts have had on businesses, particularly small and medium, in this current economic climate. I think the, the simple uh, word that explains it is devastating. It's been uh, small businesses have just hardly come out of three years of, of pressure and, and disruption caused by, by the COVID pandemic and, and all the implications. The, inter, uh, the inflation is rising. Cost of running businesses are, 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 are way above the growth in the economy. So small and medium businesses have been under pressure for the past 10 years, especially over the past three years. And when electricity gets disrupted the way it's been disrupted recently, um, it is just devastating. Now, Dr. Iraj, uh, not only businesses have uh, taken a knock, uh, normal consumers as well have, uh, have had their lives just, uh, just turned upside down from simple basic daily activities having to change to security issues. Absolutely. There is a sense of exasperation in the, in the nation, um, something that the cabinet does not seem to appreciate. Certainly some of the ministers are in denial. It is 14 years. It's not just a, an accident. It's an orchestrated denial of what needs to be done. It's a continuous rep repetition of the same mistake, wanting to go back to the last century and find last century solution for 21st century uh, problems. Uh, the solutions are here, apart from the political and business corruption, abuse of power and abuse of contracts, everything else. The fact that the, the government does not seem to have learned after 14 years that you cannot go the same way, make the same mistake and hope a different outcome. It is a sense of exasperation within business, within households, um, especially the poorer households who are whose transportation costs has gone up, whose every uh, item of, of, of basic needs have gone up by 10, 12%. And then on top of it, we have this uh, so-called load shedding, which in effect means come home, everything is dark, cold, and so on and so forth. And literally, whether we want to admit it or not, tens of thousands of people die, either because the, they do not get the uh, the, the medical help that they need, or they are at the risk of security, et cetera, et cetera. That is a very serious situation that requires exceptional, not the usual way that they've been doing it over the past 14 years. Now, Dr. Iraj, uh, we heard there uh, Andre Dereta saying that he just recently came out of a meeting with President Cyril Ramaphosa and uh, Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon. Now, if one had to put a positive outlook on this whole matter. What is the best case scenario that will come out of that meeting, looking into the short term, first of all, with these uh, stage six power cuts, which we last saw in December 2019, if I'm not mistaken, and also looking into the long term, because while we are seeing a, a, a downgrade from this evening, the, the, the load shedding is likely to continue. Absolutely. Remember for the next 10 years, ESCOM will be in a position of reviving, upgrading its, uh, its generation capacity. 55 to 60% of its capacity should have been retired 10 years ago. So we're dealing with a machine that is broken. Uh, if you want to be positive, uh, positive for the nation would be if the president comes out and does three things. One, in the short term, protect ESCOM from the criminals. Bring out the army, protect the the coal, protect the power stations, protect whatever needs to be protected in order for whatever generation we have to go ahead. At the same time, relax generation. There is technology, there is investment, there is uh, willing investors who would want to get in, but Minister of Energy and the Cabinet broadly are in the way. They must get out of the way after 14 years. That will not solve tomorrow's problem, but it will solve the problem in the next 24 months. That has to, be, has to happen. And the third one, the government must enforce the law. There is a lot of criminality still in the supply chain of ESCOM disruption and sabotage. All the ministers have talked about Mr. Gordon's second name has become sabotage, sabotage, sabotage. He's got nothing else to do. Talk about sabotage. 
But where is the police? Where is the law enforcement agencies to arrest these saboteurs and bring them to justice and create a sense of calm in the nation? For the minister to come and say, it's sabotage, sabotage, it's like uh, abdication of responsibility. It is not governance. The president must deal with that issue. Mr. Dr. Iraj Abidian, thank you so much for your time and your analysis on this matter. Now, that was economist and CEO of the Pan-African Investment and Research Services, Dr. Iraj Abidian, giving us some insight into the current electricity crisis engulfing the country.